Welcome to the USS Silverside Submarine Museum, a museum dedicated to the efforts and accomplishments of the veterans who fought in World War II. The museum behind me is a 15,000 square foot facility. We are located at 1346 Bluff Street in Muskegon, Michigan, very close to Pier Marquette Park, and of course, right on the channel that connects Muskegon Lake to Lake Michigan. Currently, there is a course on World War II history being offered at the museum every Monday night from 6 till 9 p.m. Two instructors from Muskegon Community College have developed this course, and in cooperation with the college, the class is being offered here at the museum. Throughout the 15 weeks, each evening will have a different instructor, a different speaker, a different presenter with a specific expertise. The class is attended by students who have enrolled for credit and the museum has made the offer to the community members to attend this lecture series if they so wish and do so free and of course donations are graciously and generously accepted. The topics throughout the course, if I may read from the notes that I have about the course, began on January 7th with a, the topic of from Versailles to Munich, talking about the transition from World War I to World War II. Subsequent weeks covered the topics of the German Blitzkrieg, Blitzkrieg crushing Poland, England stands alone, Hitler's dilemma, Operation Barbarossa about Russia, Pearl Harbor awakening the sleeping giant, the Pacific Theater, defeating the Desert Fox and Muskegon, the arsenal of democracy. We invite you to come to the Silversides Museum on Monday evening, beginning Monday, January 14th, 6 p.m., to enjoy a very interesting evening about World War II history. Okay, onwards and upwards, we're gonna get started with our program this evening, the Air War for Brit over Britain, and it's going to be interesting because if you like Churchill, you like airplanes, this is the day. For Trump. Ah, good afternoon. Last week, I did my damnedest to pick a fight with everyone in this room. I could not have been any more supportive of the Third Reich and the Fuhrer and his regime, yet you were all so polite to let me off the bus. So, the point is, if you've got some comments, if you have clarifications, if you've got information we don't, do not hesitate to share that with us. We really want to make sure you get your say because you've got very good things to say. You really do. By no means do we have the market cornered on all that is knowledgeable here. So, tonight we're going to talk about the Battle of Britain, which in many ways was the very first air war. Yes, there were air uh, campaigns during World War I, certainly a few dogfights, we all know about the Red Baron, we've all watched Snoopy, but in many ways, this was the first true air war. And like most things in history, we didn't know what was going to happen. At the beginning of this, Germany clearly had the superior air force. There's no question about that. What we see here is a historic embodiment of the many searchers. Many people in Britain were you know, volunteers with the government that were spotters. Spotters for the British military, what type of planes are coming, what type of armaments. So this, this is one of the many spotters that were common throughout this period, really throughout the entire war in Britain. German empowerment. Remember, we left off last week at mission accomplished. Greater Germany had been restored. Poland had been crushed. France had been brought under Brit uh, German domination. Germany is really feeling empowered. I cannot stress strong enough how much that Germany sought a peace treaty with Britain. That was never their plan, the invasion of Britain. That was always a secondary plan. The peace treaty of Britain would do several things, but among many things, it would legitimize the German Empire. 
And yes, this battle with Russia always loomed in the fear of mind. And we'll get there in a few weeks, we'll understand why, and when you understand Barbarossa and really having to do with the grain fields and the feeding of the German war machine. But I just want to reiterate again, peace with Britain was desirable. That's what Germany wanted as a way to legitimize their regime. And in many respects, it was Churchill and his rhetoric that would stop that. Certainly, the, uh, the British people were in many ways divided. In many ways divided. This is a country that is still feeling the effects of World War I. They've watched how quickly France has fallen. Signing a peace treaty is not out of the realm, but certainly with uh, Winston Churchill, and we'll hear from him tonight, and his very eloquent words, in many respects, made peace just not attainable at this time. And thus, Operation Sea Lion, this was the German operation for the invasion of uh, the island. And understanding getting across the channel at this time was no small feat. So what we've got here is a short little piece of uh, historical video. I think uh, we can watch about three minutes of this and get a real good flavor as to what was being accomplished here. And we've had some wonderful technology help from, from last week that should uh, make this very doable today.